Welcome to Uncompromised. I'm Kat. And I'm Ro. And we are going to be talking about identity today, but not just um, like a confused identity or what I want my identity to be or what I think my identity is, but that it comes from God and that it comes from His Word, which is in the Bible, that gives us the truth about who we really are and who we were created to be. So Rahelia, why is it on your heart to talk with men and build up men and have this iron sharpened iron type of thing to see them really thrive in who God's created them to be. Most men nowadays are confused on their identity. They think they have to be some domineering man or that they have to be on the completely other end of the spectrum where they have to give in with no backbone to the world or its ways without standing up for what they believe in. And I think women have uh really played a harmful role in that as well because we have either tried to become super independent and tried tearing men down so that we're not building them up for the warriors that they were created to be or um, we really try to manipulate them to get what we want out of them so it can go both ways uh, women I really want you to know who you are who God called you to be that you are strong that you are incredible that you have gifts within you that are supposed to be used, that you can change the world around you, but that you don't need to either um, manipulate a guy in order to get what you want, um, which is so easily done, and it's done out of lust, unfortunately, or to be, on the other hand of that, where... A doormat. A doormat, but also, like, where you can be so easily abused and manipulated yourself because you think that this wonderful guy is giving you everything when actually it's an abusive relationship. Because if you're strong in your identity, you're going to know who you are, you are not going to compromise. Um, you know, our whole podcast is about not compromising and it's really important to start out knowing who you really are so that you don't even compromise yourself at the beginning of it. So why do you think it's so important, Ro, that we not only go to God and try and listen and hear Him, but we also go to the Bible to find our identity. Well, first off, the Bible is where we should go first. It's the law of God. God's Word is, first and foremost, should be first and foremost in our lives. And if we're not going to the Bible to find our identity, we're lost. If we're not finding our identity in Christ, we're lost. If we're going to things of the world, we're lost. There are so many different things in the world that are causing us to... The world wants us to compromise our identity. Satan's plan is to steal, kill, and destroy. And God's plan is to come... He came that we may have life and life more abundant. And Satan's plan with men is that we compromise our identity as a strong man. Not standing up for what we believe in. Not showing authority in our families or just in our lives if you're single or uh, in your marriage if you're married and I think women have a big role to play but then men have a big role to play where they're going into the word and they're finding their identity in the word but women also have a role because they need to be building their man up not tearing him down uh, your man goes to work every day and he comes home tired are you helping him out are you building him up saying thank you for going to work because I mean I have a physical job and I like coming home and hearing you say, like, thanks for working because I worked hard. Like, mm -hmm. I go to work. I want to be home. Honestly, I'd rather sit on the couch, watch TV, and spend time with you than go to work. And sometimes you do need that thankfulness uh, yeah. to actually get you through the day. And I think it goes both ways, too. Just um, husbands really look at what your wife does to take care of the home or different things. And just, I think... What you're trying to say is live in a community of thankfulness and honor and respect. Because with that comes servanthood, like true servanthood. Like if you serve me really well, I want to in return serve you really well. But we cannot do that unless we have a strong identity in ourselves first. Which, of course, comes through the word. So, our, um, Ro has some Bible verses here that we are going to go through to just talk about... Um, what the Bible says about our identity, who God calls us to be, what we are in Him, and what we're supposed to be to the world. And we may not get through all these verses today, but uh, 
the, the main thing is that we have a foundation of what our identity is. And if we have that, nothing can stand against us. If God is for us, who can be against us? Um, so I'm going to jump into the Old Testament first. Uh, I love the Old Testament. I love the stories of the Old Testament. Uh, it gave us a foundation for the New Testament. So what is your identity? So in Genesis 127, God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. So what does this verse mean? It means that as men and women, we're both created in the image of God. You're creating the image of God. I'm creating the image of God. And that's where we find our natural identity, male and female. There's only two genders here. There's no 69 genders out there. So that is where our identity comes from in the natural means. One thing I love about God's Word is we can always go back to it. I was very insecure um, throughout my life. I was very shy. I was very timid because I didn't think that people liked me. I didn't think that people wanted me around because my personality wasn't good enough for them or just who I was wasn't good enough for them. And that was a total lie from the pit of hell from the enemy. And so it's always good to be able to have God's Word because it's alive and it's active and it... It's there to encourage us and to build us up, and it is also there for correction. Um, but I can always go back if I'm having a bad day or something like that and be reminded by God, by my Father in His Word, that this is who I am. I can read it every day. I can write it down. I can look at the living, breathing Word of God. Absolutely. And uh, here's another verse for, again, just your natural identity. 1 Samuel 16, 7 says, But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not look at his appearance or at, it, at the height of his stature, because I have rejected him. For God sees not as man sees. For man looks at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. As men and women of God, we need to stop looking at what other people see on the outside. If you're bigger in size, if you're skinny, you need to stop looking at that. If you're super big and muscular as a guy, stop looking at yourself that way because that's not what God wants to see. He wants to see, are you looking at your own heart? Are you looking at your deeds? Are you looking at your actions? Are you in, do you have integrity? Because first out of the heart, the mouth speaks, but also God looks at the heart before our outward appearance. And so many people deal with jealousy, deal with comparison, deal with so many issues, even covetousness, because they see the outward appearance or they and see lustfulness. a life and lustfulness. They see a life that they want, that they desire that someone else has. And instead of going back to, all right, God, what are the gifts you have for me? Who have you created me to be? I know that when I follow you out of obedience, it's better than anything else. I could even ask, imagine, or think. We go straight to comparison or covetousness and how can I get there? How can I achieve this? Like you said, building muscle. Like, how can I make sure that I'm the most attractive? How can I make sure that, you know, people like me for my outward appearance when that's not all terrible? And even right now, like, we're going through um, a really healthy season of making sure we're eating well, making sure that we're going to get those workouts in, you know, all these things to take care of our body. But first, we have to make sure that our heart is right, that our intentions are right, that our character is right. Absolutely. And based on your character, again, it goes back into, are you? do you have integrity? I mean, when I met you, the thing that attracted me to you specifically was that you were kind. You were kind of outgoing. You weren't super shy. You, you knew your identity. It, it was just that I'm confident in who I am, whether I look super duper pretty or I got bed hair and which I have a lot <laughs> absolutely but Monet helps we'll talk about that later <laughs> <laughs> so but your identity is not found in how much makeup you have on it's not found in how much muscle you have I mean I got a little bit of chub no <laughs> and it's also not about what job you have or the titles you have or the things that you can necessarily like brag or boast about. It's about who you are, the choices that you're making, why are you making those choices, and are you loving people well? But we, we will also talk about how love is not necessarily what the world sees as love, 
but it's also full of correction and justice and different things like that. And that'll come later. But the next verse I have is Isaiah 64, 8. But now, O Lord, you are our Father, we are the clay, and you are potter. In all of us, you are the work of your hand. And what that's saying is that God created us. He molded us. I mean, I took pottery when I was in uh, middle school. And, man, clay is not easy to mold. And, but I'm not artistic. I'm not a potter by any means. But it's very difficult. It was very difficult for me to mold because it's soft and you have to you have to be very gentle with it because if you pinch too hard in one spot it'll crack if it's not the same way all the way around it's gonna break in the kiln and God tests us by fire and the Bible says that we go through the vi go through the fire and out comes beauty beauty from ashes, beauty from from ashes. and we are clay we need to be clay we need to be moldable by the word not by the world and I think with that Pottery takes time. It takes patience. It takes a lot of um, understanding that, like, God really knows what's better for me. He really understands what's best for my life because he created me to do something special. And I think a lot of you need to truly understand and know that your life is so valuable that nobody can do on earth what God has created you to do. And if you're not functioning out of your full identity, people are missing out on what you can bring and what you can offer. Yeah, don't let anybody ever tell you that you're not worth it. Don't tell yourself you're not worth it because you were bought with a price. The Bible says you were bought with a price. And that price was a very high price. It was God's one and only son. It was a perfect lamb for an offering and if you go back to Leviticus like in order for Jesus to really truly live a perfect life it would have been so hard by the human standards and while Jesus was fully man he was also fully God and he actually went to the Father he would go to the Father to fill himself up he would take a step away and find a secret place for him to connect with his father, for him to go pray alone. Yeah, and as Christians, we need to be doing that regularly. I myself struggle with that just because we're all busy. I'm not going to make excuses for myself, but we are busy. It's hard to find a secret place, a time to spend with God. Uh, the last couple times, I've been doing it at night before I go to bed. Um, sometimes I do it in the morning, but as long as you're finding that time for you and God to build your relationship and to find your identity, because lately, and you know this, my identity has been attacked with who am I as a Christian? Am I following God the right way? Am I doing the things I'm supposed to be doing for God? Am I, is my ministry that God wants me to be in, is that now? Is that later? Is it this big grand thing or is it going to be small and start out small and my identity has been taking a beating because of it because Satan doesn't Satan knows our identity more than we do he knows our potential more than we do which and is he's why he's afraid of it and he's afraid of it so right. he tries to stop us from realizing our full potential from our identity and our calling and he does that through distractions he does it through work he does it through arguments with your spouse or just arguments in general he does it through video games and tv but that's why you constantly have to be back in the word to know what your identity is and be refreshed and there needs to be a healthy balance of those things because it's not that work is bad or evil or that watching tv is bad or evil it's just that if that is becoming an idol or taking place over your relationship with god that you need to reevaluate your actions and your choices yeah, and this is a good verse for that. Know that the Lord himself is God. It is he who has made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. And where is that found? That's all found in Psalm 100 and th verse 3. Psalm 100 verse 3. And uh, that just tells us that we're supposed to be in his pasture. We're supposed to find his rest. I mean... As long as your rest doesn't go against the, the Bible, like your natural rest is a great thing. 
but make sure that you're finding rest in your Father because He's going to tell you who you are. Mm -hmm. Find the verses in the Bible and read them and speak them over yourself. And also, we both highly recommend to get an interlinear Bible. We just got that um, within the past few months. And what that is, is it gives you um, like the Hebrew and the Greek, and then it gives you the English. And it actually has like the Greek and Hebrew words there so that you can look them up in like a Strong's Dictionary or Concordance to fully understand what the verses are actually saying. Um, like we read about the woman with the issue of blood. And what it actually says, when she touches him, Jesus speaks the words, Who of me touched me? And we never knew that before. Because the translations didn't give us, you know, the exact words that were written down so that we could better understand that. And that was a huge, you know, revelation to both of us. Because she was already of Jesus because she believed in who he was. She believed in him as the Son of God and what he carried in his power. And believed in his identity as the Messiah, the, yes. like you said, the Son of God, the man who is going to take the sins of the world and bring us back into fellowship with the Father. And so, one verse that I really love about our identity is, like that woman, she had an issue of blood, but she, who of me touched me? So, if we are of Christ, we are His. That is our identity. We need to find our identity in Christ. And we need to keep choosing that over anything else because our identities can be easily molded by our choices and actions. Absolutely. But a good verse is Psalm 139, verse 14. I will give thanks to you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works, and my soul knows it very well. That woman... She knew that she was fearfully and wonderfully made. Like, though she was bleeding out for 12 years, she knew that she... And, and going back a little bit quick, fearfully in this context means reverence, honor, and respect. God made you out of reverence, honor, and respect, which means you are to live your life out of reverence, honor, and respect. And so this woman, out of reverence and honor found Christ's identity in him. And because she found his his identity, she found her identity in him. He and, respected that. And her identity was healed, whole, and well. Exactly. And a lot of Christians nowadays say, oh, healing isn't for today. Tongues isn't for today. When no, the apostolic days didn't pass away. They're here right now. It's just how often are you going to actually work with Christ in those moments? Mm -hmm. How open are we in our own identity to let Christ take over and rip our hearts open and say, God, use me today. Mm -hmm. And go to his word and find out what his word really says. Something that I've really respected from some teachers and something that we're going to tell you too is, you know, we want you to listen to our podcast. We want you to grow and to learn, but always, always go back to God and his word because people can be lying to you so easily or they just don't fully understand what the word is actually saying. And so it's vitally important to understand the words that were put into the Bible, why they were there, what's the context of it, how does it apply to our lives today, and not um, be misled or misguided by people who have just been taught by other people's theologies, ideologies, or opinions. Exactly. Because as human beings, we are so impressionable by our peers. What are What is everybody going to think? What are they going to do if they see me riding around in a beater old car like that's rusted out? What are they going to say? Everybody has to get past the point of offense in their own life. Because the Bible says don't take offense. And with our identities, we get so offended so quickly because they're somebody may say something against us and we see it as an attack against who we are when it could just be a correction. And I think we need to understand that like the Bible was also used for correction and correction doesn't always feel good, but it helps us like you, like the Bible says, like iron sharpening iron, we're going to go through like the gold 
process, the refining process. We have to make sure that our hearts are always open to like, God, what do you want? I don't want to put you in a box. I want what you have for me and I want to know what your word really truly says. Because so many people are trying to figure out like, how how can I make you love me? That's what so many people are trying to do. Like, I, I just want to feel loved, I want to feel accepted, I want to feel appreciated, I want to feel affirmed, I want to feel known. And I think that technology honestly has a big part into why people are fighting that so much because there's not a lot of genuine connection anymore. There's not a lot of like, face-to-face, -face, filling you up, uh, understanding what's going on. And I think that's why the world has been so impressionable on people because they're like, oh, this is popular, this is a trend, I'm gonna jump in on it because then people will love me more and I'll feel more accepted. As a human race in general, we have lost the ability to find our identity in the people that we hang out with. I mean, the saying is true. You are who you hang out with. If you're hanging out with people that aren't Christians, sooner or later, you're going to end up doubting your own faith. It's It all comes down to what are you spending time in? Are you spending time in God's word? Is your identity in God's word? Or is it going to be in the world and your friends and the people who don't believe in God? And I'm just going to add a tidbit on this. that He's not saying, because so many people will try and pick apart people's words and try and, you know, turn it back on them as a sword, but what what he's trying to say is you, that should not be your core group of people. Your core group of people should be the ones at your church, they should be your community, your fellowship that you don't forsake, that you are building you up, that are strengthening you, and then you can go and minister to those people and you can show them who God is, you can show them what he's like, but they should not be the ones that are drawing you into the things of the world if they are not of God, because God and sin cannot mix. And if he's within you, why are you trying to bring him to that situation and into a situation like that? And you've told me once before that, actually a couple times, that God wants to be invited to where you are. If God, if you're going to a place where God is not going to be invited, you should not go there as a Christian mm -hmm. because, again, your identity is in Christ. Christ didn't go to those places. A lot of people say he, he went into the bars and all these other places. No, show me the verse where it, it, it says that. Show me the verse. It doesn't say that. It says he ate with them, but it doesn't say that he actually went into those places. Because God calls us to be holy as he is holy, and... What does holy mean? It means being set apart. So, and also, like, we are called to be undefiled by the world. When you look at the verse in James that a lot of people use for true and proper religion, um, it says, for true and proper religion, you know, take care of orphans and widows, but then they'll stop there. When actually, the end of that verse says, and keep yourself from being defiled by the world. And that's what true and proper religion is. You, you, exactly. And in 1 Peter 2 9, it says, But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for God's own possession, so that you may proclaim the excellencies of Him who has called you out of darkness into His marvelous light. If we're not being a light to the world, if our identity is not being a light to the world, where's God's light? We don't have any light of our own. It's Christ in us that gives us that light. And like you were saying, we need to be holy as God is holy. We are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for God's own possession. God doesn't want us to be dung. I mean, for goodness sakes, in the Old Testament, he says, Go out outside of the camps and bury your dung. Bury your poo. And... God doesn't want poo. He wants holiness. He wants a priesthood. Priests have to be ceremonial clean before they go before God. That means they have to wash. They can't be defiling themselves with another wife if they're married. They have to be a husband of one wife. Mm -hmm. They can't find their identity in the world at all. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying that the world itself is bad. I'm saying that the things that Satan has twisted in the world is bad. Mm -hmm. 
Because as Christians, if we were to pull ourselves out of the world, we would literally have to pull ourselves out of the world and not even be here. Yeah, and that's what Paul talks about. You know, he says we are to be, you know, not of the world, but in the world. We are to bring God, well, and now I am paraphrasing. That was what Paul said. I am saying, like, we need to bring God's kingdom to the world. We're not supposed to be a part of the what the world is choosing to do and how it's choosing to live. We are supposed to be a part of God's kingdom in the world to show people what he's truly and what he's really like. And yes, God has a standard. Why? Because he says, be holy as I'm holy. God and sin can't mix. And he desires, so desires a relationship, a true relationship that he can be intimate with us, that he can talk with us, that he's invited, you know, to be where we are, to do what we do, to go where we go. And then with that, like, he wants to bring more people in. The Bible says that, like, God is not slow as some people understand slowness, but he wants everyone to come to repentance. He doesn't want to lose one single person because of his love for them. And God always meets people where they're at. But he also wants you to rise up. Like, God wants us to be the best. And the things that he has for us, the things he's told us not to do, aren't just so that God, isn't just so that God can be up there as a big ruler and, like, commander and, like, oh, I'm going to tell you you have to do this and not do this just because I say so. But it's all out of our own protection for our health, our well-being, our spiritual wellness, our mental wellness, our physical wellness. Like, everything that he has in his word is actually to help us and to make sure that we are taking the best care of ourselves. Exactly. You you can't have freedom without a law to abide by. Otherwise, you have anarchy. And God is a God of order. He's not a God of anarchy. Another verse that I love is 1 Corinthians 5, 2 Corinthians 5.17. There, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creature. The old things have passed away. Behold, new things have come. And here, I'm just going to throw in a quick tidbit. Your old friends are going to see you as the old you until you show them that new creation. Do not let them or the enemy convince you of going back to that old person into the rags, into the orphan, into the poverty-stricken person. No, now you are a child of God. You're a new creation. You know, you are created to live a holy, incredible, prosperous, blessed life in Christ. Exactly. Now you are Christ's body and individual members of it. 1 Corinthians twelve twenty seven, And that kind of goes into what you were saying. Like, they're going to see you as the old you. But when you become a new creature in Christ, you are now a part of Christ's body, and you are an individual. You're not just you're you're not just a uh, a piece of a machine. You are an individual. You can make your own decisions. And it it also goes into comparison. We're not supposed to compare ourselves to others because we have our job, and if we're trying to do someone else's job, we can't fully do that as the um, body of Christ. So thank you for listening to our first podcast. Um, this is just the introduction into identity. We're going to continue going on it. Um, if there ha are any prayer requests or any concerns or any questions, please feel free to reach out to us. We would love to talk with you, and we would love to pray with you and um, work with you and see how we can champion you in your identity. If you want to reach out to us, our email is hayesfamilyministry2717 at gmail.com. We call you blessed and highly favored by the Lord, and we pray right now in Jesus' name that any veil over your eyes is ripped away, that you can walk in the fullness and entirety of God's blessing and calling over your life. And Lord, we thank you that each person that hears this podcast is going to find their identity. In Jesus' name, amen. Welcome to Uncompromised. I'm Kat. And I'm Ro. And we are going to be talking about identity today, but not just um, 
like a confused identity or what I want my identity to be or what I think my identity is, but that it comes from God and that it comes from His Word, which is in the Bible, that gives us the truth about who we really are and who we were created to be. So, Rahim.